In many cities around the country, Earth Day will be celebrated this year with a March for Science to tell us what's planned for the activities Saturday in Boston are the event's chair of inclusion and equity, Lumbi Tashi, and the director of communications, Elizabeth Thomas Crocker. Thank you both very much for being with us. Thank you for having us. I also with Lumbi Tashi, uh, you know, we've all heard about this March for Science and it's got something to do with, you know, global warming, climate change, the Trump policies, but what does this have to do with the neighborhoods? I would really say that the March for Science is about connecting our neighbors with science. And it's a nonpartisan rally that we are trying to... Hmm. Well, m make sure that people understand that this matters to their life. Absolutely, absolutely. And I feel like people have a general idea about science. It doesn't seem accessible to them. And the March is definitely trying to make science more accessible to all neighborhoods, all types of people. Elizabeth Thomas Crocker, uh, what do you see is the reasons why this should matter to, to people in Boston? Well, science impacts our lives every single day. And some of the things that we're worried about are things like defunding organizations like the EPA, NOAA, um, different organizations that do really vital work in protecting our children, protecting our communities, and protecting our futures, making strong economies. The NIH is incredibly important for our economy, but also the health and safety of our children. So when we think about why you should care about these kinds of issues, it's because science is what's protecting your children from getting the measles. Science is protecting your children from having you know, dirty water. It's really important in our everyday lives, and we want to come together and celebrate that and also advocate for that. Let me tell you, talk about it. We, we, instead of just being about these uh, world-class scientists and laboratories, I mean, we, we're talking about all these jobs that people mm -hmm. in the neighborhoods have, right? Yes, absolutely. I believe that the March for Science is about um, us promoting and encouraging our politicians to use evidence-based research when making these policies that impact our neighborhoods every day. Right. Well, so Thomas Parker, I think the other thing that goes on, when you've got a march, you see all these people uh, in the street. And I guess the people you see changes the way we perceive the issue, maybe, too. Well, we hope so, because I think sometimes the misconception is that this is just about scientists, and it's not. It's about science, and that impacts, like I said, everyone, and we want to have a diverse representation. We want to be very inclusive and equitable there, and we're hoping that people from all over Boston come together and celebrate and talk about why this is so important. We also want it to be a bridge-building moment between the people in the lab coats and the people in the streets, right? that we need to do better at communicating and talking to each other and working together to solve problems. This is BNN News and we're talking about the March for Science in Boston with Lumbi Tashi and Elizabeth Thomas Crocker. Uh, Lumbi, uh, talk about the way this march is being organized because this is this is not just adults. Uh, yes. You, you, you've, got, you've got a subsection here. For, for yes, we do. Uh, we're uh, having a kids march and there's going to be lots of fun things to engage the children in science. There's going to be a tank, so there will be some um, marine life. And that's going to be from one to two. And the general march is going to have a bunch of speakers. We're going to have Gina McCarthy speaking, who's the former EPA administrator. So it should be a great event with a lot of diverse people speaking and the kids are gonna be having fun. We're very, very excited. Uh, Elizabeth Thomas Parker, talk about where this is going to be happening and what it's going to be like when people sure. are out there. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be on the Boston Common, right at the corner of Charles Street and Beacon Street. We're going to have um, near the bandstand areas, the kids section from one to four, so from one to two, we're going to have speakers for kids, people who are like write children's books and that kind of thing. And then from two to four, we have all the science demonstration tables with like the aquariums coming with the touch tank and all kinds of really cool things, robots and bubbles. And then on the main stage area, which is closer to the corner between those two streets, we have a huge stage. We're going to have musicians, ba bam and Second Line are playing from 1 to 2. And from 2 to 4, we have our huge lineup of speakers, some really important people giving a lot of great talks, but also K-12 through teachers. We have children who won an essay contest who get to read their essays on stage. And we have like a cancer survivor and a doctor who works on the kinds of treatments that actually saved her life who will be on stage together. Some really beautiful moments. And then we'll end with a sing-along. Uh, let me talk to you, uh, you know, most of the time you're, you're working with the Union of Minority Neighborhoods. So what got you started on this particular event? I was very interested in the march because I, I noticed that they were, they were interested in 
inclusion and equity and diversity and promoting different faces and people from different walks of life. And that's what I like to do at UMN. So I was eager to join in on this on this project for science and for equality. Elizabeth Thomas Crocker, um, you're a social scientist. We, at least you're heading in that direction, right? So, so in cultural anthropology. So, yeah. So how did you go from that to this march for science? Well, anthropologists would tell you we social science counts as science, <laughs> but <laughs> um, but it's something I'm very passionate about. That I also am a research assistant at the Division of Emerging Media Studies here at Boston University, and. One of the things we've looked at in the past is communication between scientists and the public. And how can we be better about getting, helping the public understand what we do, what science is like, but also better understanding the public. And as an anthropologist, that's something I'm really interested in, is helping people from different perspectives understand one another and building those bridges and working together to solve problems in a more holistic way. So finally, we should uh, l remind our people in the audience uh, a little bit about when and, and where this guy, I know it's gonna be the calm of what, exactly what time on Saturday? It's Saturday, the 22nd, from 2 to 4. From 1, from one, one to, to 4. four. <laughs> Good. And Elizabeth Tom Crocker, you got a website or something that people can look at? Yes, they can go to www.marchforscienceboston.com. Thank you both very much, Elizabeth Thomas Crocker and Lumbi Tashi. Thank you. Thank you.